Uh, good morning. It's an honor and pleasure to speak to you about the subscapularis. I'm sorry I can't be with you this morning. These are my disclosures, which are available on the Academy website. These are my goals, and I'll achieve them if you leave today and have one or two tips and techniques that you can use the next time you repair a subscapularis, as well as have an even better appreciation for the comma sign. This is a typical posterior superior tear, but on the MRI, if you go a couple cuts anterior in this patient, you'll see the comma tissue and often fluid medial to the coracoid. This is the patient at arthroscopy viewed from the posterior portal. You can see the comma tissue, the rolled edge of the subscapularis, and when you pull on the comma, it brings the tendon into the more anatomic position. This is another example in a left shoulder. When you pull the biceps out of the way, there's the comma tissue. When you come through the cuff defect, you can bring the subscapularis laterally. And this is because the comma connects the subscapularis and the supraspinatus. And when you bring the subscapularis laterally and repair it, you bring both tendons into a much better position. You get a more secure repair. And this is something Steve Burkhart and I spoke about and wrote about some years ago. I also look for the middle glenohumeral ligament. Here's the comma tissue, retract on it and bring the tendon laterally. And when you see the middle glenohumeral ligament in its normal position at or lateral to the glenoid, that'll help guide you with how much you need to bring it laterally to the repair. And this is in this case, an external rotation. Traction sutures are very helpful. You can see it brought through an anterolateral puncture. And when you bring it laterally, it exposes the area and you can do releases in this case around the subscapularis. I also use it to help with anchor position. Once I've done the releases with the arm in neutral position, if I can bring my subscapularis to that position, that's where I'll place my anchor and get a nice secure repair. Anchor insertion, the typical techniques, you can go percutaneous, you can go through cannula lateral to the subscapularis or through the rotator interval. For suture passage, I like a retrograde technique because the tendon avulses on this line. And so I want to pass similar to this line. As an aside, this is what I've turned the Oz subscapular. And when you see it on preoperative imaging, in my cases, it's always indicated a subscapularis tear. Retrograde technique, I'll bring the crescent-shaped hook about two centimeters inferior to the rolled edge, about a centimeter and a half medial on the subscapularis. I'll bring that shuttle suture and bring my repair suture through. I'll bring all sutures uh, for each anchor through and then tie them. I'm using a 30 degree scope, so it is fairly easy to see. Here's another case, just showing the, uh, uh, bringing the knock down and you get a nice repair view from the anterior portal and from the uh, posterior portal after the half hitches are placed. When you use metal, anch metal anchors, it showed well, this is where they should be. I thought I'd show some techniques using a single anterior portal because it's not always easy to get a second cannula in. This is a case where the biceps is perched. Here's the tear of the subscapularis. With the arm flexed, you can see the less tuberosity, denuded of soft tissue, do your releases, and place your anchor as I showed above. You'll pass your crescent-shaped hook from anterior. Your zero proline, you'll retrieve that and the repair suture that you want through back through the same cannula. If you do it this way, it won't confound with the other sutures. And repeat that for the remaining uh, sutures in the anchor. Um, this is back to our case. Now you've got the three sutures passed, but you have some sutures above the subscapularis. I like to pass them through it. And I'll show you in another case, pass all three together. You don't need to detach the tissue and it's okay they come through the same hole because if there were a single anchor there, it'd be in the same position. And here, back to our case, here they are through laterally. Another issue is you may have multiple suture pairs within the cannula. I'll bring a spinal needle with a loop of suture. I'll bring that and the sutures I want to remove from the cannula out through it, place them into that loop and bring it back 
out through the skin, and then I can tie one suture pair at a time. This is the repair, and this is the patient at seven months. When the subscapularis tear is smaller, you can place a single suture like this. To go through the biceps, I'll pass a high tensile suture at its midpoint, bring it out and through, and this allows me to create a luggage tag configuration. I will pass one suture all the way around it to fully encircle the biceps. Here's an example. There's the subscapularis tear. And without that, this would be a hidden lesion. I've passed my sutures as I described above. I'll plan my anchor position, place the sutures into the distal portion of the anchor, bring it down, tension, and reduce the tendons. Lock them in with a the suture. I do tie half edges so the sutures don't back out. And this is your repair, uh, nice and secure. Back to our patient we started with. I've used some of the techniques to repair the subscapularis. It brought the antero superior portion of the supraspinous laterally. It's still a large repair achieved with a single row technique. And here he is at one year. Thank you.